Hey everybody, if you're a teacher right now, you know that this year more than any has been difficult, especially with all of the added responsibilities that have been laid on us during the pandemic between synchronous and asynchronous, virtual and in-person and all of the extra social distancing requirements that make our job way more difficult than it already is. These, along with all of the other things that we've been having to do, are leading to the number one cause of teachers leaving our profession, and that is burnout. Burnout, of course, is the fatigue and the stress and the overall lack of passion for teaching that is a result of all of the burdens that teachers bring home with them on a daily basis. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the things that I personally do to prevent burnout. My name is Caleb, and you're watching The Future Millionaire Band Director. Of course, there are a ton of ways to combat teacher burnout. Just do a quick YouTube search and you'll find a dozen different videos with all sorts of different strategies. In this video, I want to talk about my personal strategies that could hopefully provide you a framework on how you can avoid burnout. And the first and most important thing that I do to avoid burnout is to set boundaries. We all know as teachers that the work is endless. This is true whether or not you're a kindergarten teacher, a middle school coach, a high school head band director. Even for somebody like me who's just an assistant band director, I've got tons of work that I could be doing all the time. There's always emails to be responded to, there's always grades to update, there's always things to be organized, filed away. In fact, my to-do list at work has got five or six items on it. The way that our profession is, there will always be work to be done. There will always be things that we can take home with us to do work on. But if you don't set a boundary as to where work starts and stops and where your personal time starts and stops, then work will always win out. Work will always take over if you don't make the specific and conscious decision to set that boundary. For me, this means that I only do things outside of my contract day that I want to do. So outside of my contract day, I will work with students one-on-one, -on -one, I'll go to rehearsals, I'll answer messages from students that are musically related, but I won't work on other things that I don't want to work on outside of my contract day. I'm not getting paid for that time. Now, some of you may find that to be impossible. And of course, it is impossible if you say it's impossible. But I have set a clear boundary that during my contract day, I will work and outside of my contract day, I will only do things that I want to do. On the other hand, some of you are comfortable, totally comfortable taking work home with you and have been doing so for years and you don't find that you're burnt out at all. To those people, I say, bless you. I don't know how you do it. But for me, work stays at work and this boundary creates a clear separation of my personal and professional life. If you haven't found your own boundaries yet, you should think about it and you should be very, very explicit and detailed with where your boundaries are going to be. This is going to help set the foundation and framework for the rest of your personal and professional balance. Now that I have my boundaries set, this brings me to my second point, which is removing everything that I don't actually need. So when I get home from work, usually it's in between 5.30 and 6.30, I have a couple of hours of precious, precious time to myself before I go to sleep and start the whole thing over again. In order to maximize that time, I've removed certain things. For example, I sold my Xbox and my PlayStation and my TV. For me, when I was playing video games or binge watching tons of television, I didn't feel like I was getting a solid recharge for the next day. In fact, in like the theory of time perception, there's this idea that sometimes when you do things that are very, very enjoyable, it feels like a short amount of time. Like when you go on a vacation, the vacation feels really, really quick. But when you look back on this vacation, it might appear to be longer or it is more likely to stick in your memory, even though it was a short time. Conversely, when sometimes when you're stuck in traffic, even though it's actually a short time, it may feel like a long time. Well, there's an interesting phenomenon that happens specifically when you do things like watch TV or consume social media. It feels like a short time, even though a long time passes. And then when you look back on it, it also still feels like a short time. They call this the short, short problem. So I know that when I have free time, I don't want it to feel like it goes by quickly. And I don't want to look back on it like I had too little of it. So I've eliminated all of the activities that I do that feel like a short time, both while they're happening and when I look back on them. So for example, those active hobbies include walking the dogs, journaling every day, taking Spanish lessons, making YouTube videos, and making slash having dinner with my boyfriend. All of those items involve some element of creativity or active motion. There's only one thing that I like to do when I get home that doesn't involve some sort of active motion, which is watching a sports game, which of course we call a pastime. So I try to make a marked difference between my activities and my pastimes. What ends up happening with these activities is that we perceive that same amount of time as being longer than when we have a pastime. So it is important to me that I do this self-care activity 
in my free time rather than a pastime. Or at least I try to do more activities than I do pastimes. And the reason why I try to do more activities is because my time is limited when I get home because of my third piece of advice, which is setting a hard, fast bedtime. For the first couple of years that I was teaching, my bedtime was midnight and I would wake up at 5 a.m. I was on a five hour sleep cycle. The older I got, the less tenable this became. And it wasn't until this year that I moved my bedtime to earlier, like 9 to 9.30, because I wake up at 4.30 to go work out. Another way that I reclaim my time by having an activity that I do. Setting a bedtime, believe it or not, was one of the most liberating things that I've done because I, I knew that through the course of the evening when I got home, I had about three hours to do everything I needed to do. And no matter what, I was getting in bed between 9 and 9.30. This also caused me to reprioritize my activities and my pastimes to be activity based. So I'm still quasi productive. I perceive the time as longer and I get a full night's sleep. Notice the bedtime is another form of boundary that I've set. So I've set clear boundaries on my professional time and I've now set clear boundaries on my personal time. So that way I have sleep time. One of the symptoms of burnout is fatigue. And the only way to combat fatigue is more sleep. And the only way to get more sleep is if you create a schedule, which allows you more sleep. So far, I have set boundaries at work. I've been more meaningful with my free time when I get home and I've set boundaries by creating a bedtime. As a result, I've not taken work home with me at all this year. There are things that are still on my to-do list and I'm okay with the fact that those things aren't getting done. In fact, some of you guys might be stressing out about that and let me know in the comments. It's okay. It's okay not to get everything done because when I get home with my limited time, now that I've set an earlier bedtime, I actually feel more productive more well rested and more recharged. These are just a few simple strategies that I use on a daily basis to keep myself from burning out. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. And as always, thanks for watching.